Hi, welcome to another video. This video will introduce you to the phenomenon of gate loop ringing. I made a video back in 2017, PV had engraved off the part number off the FET. So they were blown up, I couldn't identify it. So, like this one here today, I happen to have a few high current, high voltage FETs laying around. The FET I chose to use was an Infineon. When I put that FET onto the PCB, two of them, turned the power on, the cooling fans came on immediately, something was getting hot, so it kept on turning the power off before the new FETs destroyed themselves. So after a bit of testing, I established the gate was ringing, but moreover, when the gate was switched off, the FET continued to ring, continued to pass current. So with that, it was an interesting phenomenon to see, so I showed it on the bench. But since then, I've had a few, only a few in 36,000 people, a few people say, well, if I've got long leads, what do I expect? I'm playing with megahertz. But I, unless you're familiar with gate loop ringing, you're not going to know you're playing with megahertz. And in this example today, I'm not playing with megahertz. I wasn't back then, and I'm not today. I'm playing with a DC power supply. There. So this video is purely to demonstrate gate loop ringing, what causes it, more importantly, how gate loop ringing only seems to affect Infineon FETs, and how Infineon FETs do not switch off. So today I'm using the Vichy FET transistor I demonstrated last night in the video for selecting your gate resistor. That's wired up now to a 12 volt bulb and straight to my power supply. No gate resistor. My power supply pulls the gate down to ground, so I don't need anything to discharge it down to source. I will show you the schematic and then put this MOSFET to a test and I'll demonstrate gate loop ringing, which is easy on this bench since I have long leads. You can see because I've got a few feet of cables running to the power supply, I've illustrated them as inductors because long cables are great inductors or great aerials. So this demonstration will first start with a FET I used last night, the Vichy IRF840A. Right, so the Vichy transistor. If I show you the power supply first, so you can see the bulb, there's basically two regions in the FET. You've got the ohmic region and then the saturation region. When you turn the gate up just a small way and the FET starts partially conducting, it acts like a variable resistor. And for that ohmic region, the current through the drain and source is nearly linear with the voltage applied to the gate. So you've got the ohmic region and then the saturation region when the transistor is fully on. So that's the two regions. So 14 volts running to the bulb. This is a gate on the right. If I just show you on, off, on. I've wired it up. To, this is a stop and tail. So we've got 430 milliamps when it's fully on on, off, hopefully you're happy with that, well I can't get any closer than that otherwise you won't be able to see the power supply and the scope. So watch the voltage as I turn it up slowly and it goes through the ohmic region and watch the current and watch the scope, you'll see it start to ring. 2 volts. This gauge reads slightly under actually, so you can see the voltage coming up on the scope. 
there we go 3.8 volts we've got 30 40 milliamps so we're in the ohmic region that FET will be getting hot or maybe not too hot it actually is warm but we've only got 30 40 milliamps but so notice probably can't see it from there this is ringing at 6 7 megahertz we've actually got a peak to peak voltage of 22 23 volts so 22 23 volts yeah we've only got 14 there 3.8 there i'll discuss that later so continue to turn it up as i explained in my first video back in 17 when it's in the ohmic region the fet is going to be getting hot because it is dissipating some power it hasn't come down to the full RDS on the saturation region, so there will be a high resistance. So in fact, that's 100 milliamps, it's still warm. Right, so 4.4, right on 5, nearly 5, you can see it's, well, it's stopped ringing, but we're still in the ohmic region. I know that because if I turn the gate up to roughly 8 volts, 430 milliamps is the maximum current for this bulb. And so I'm turning it back down to turn it off, goes back through the ohmic region. It's come out of the saturation region, so it is now dissipating power. So you never want to allow your FET to ring or oscillate. But what's important with this Vichy? Let me show you. What is important is this current fully on fully off fully on fully off on off well you can see that always turns off that's the Vichy FET this is now the Infineon IPP 80R360P on off on off on off hello what's that that is another Infineon, not switching off. That is the very reason I chose to do the video all those years ago. Because unless you see this, you would not believe it. And this happened with two Infineon FETs soldered into an amplifier. I had previously thought it's down to the larger gate capacitance, the larger total capacitance. But this one, this model, requires less of a charge than this Vichy. So this is a cool MOS. People say, oh, well, my gate must be sitting high. Well, that's what the gate's doing. If I turn the power supply off, that's a zero volts. In fact, so that clearly demonstrates this is actually worse than the one I tested all those years ago. There's naught volts in the middle. It's going beneath naught volts. So it's coming down lower than the source. Yeah, remaining on this one is ringing oscillating 4.3 megs so that's conducting yeah, 250 million hopefully you can see that so if i turn the power up oh we can see oh look three volts it turned on Right, so 8, 9, so 430 milliamps through the bulb. Is that what we had before? Or did we have 450? I'll have to watch the video back. If the previous had 450, then that means this Infineon has a higher on resistance. But, on the previous test, I had to mess about to try and get it to come on. It was like touch and go. This model today, same lead, same power supply. So unless you're familiar with this phenomenon of gate loop ringing and Infineon FETs not switching off, if you start repairing electronic equipment in your later years and you're not aware of this phenomenon, you're not going to know what hits you when you've got a terrible fault like this. That's why I did the video. I guess I have to put my hands up because 
I compared other FETs. I shouldn't be comparing other FETs on a bench in this scenario. However, all the other FETs did not remain on. You'll probably be able to get every single FET to ring if you, ha if you test it with long leads, probably. The way to mitigate or reduce the possibility of ringing is to increase your gate resistor. In fact, since I still have these resistors here from last night, so there's no solder on the soldering iron. Don't want to melt my scope probe any more than it's melted. Well, I think this is a it's 120 ohm. And as someone else pointed out in the previous video, I shouldn't be demonstrating wire wound resistors. <laughs> They're full of inductance, but it's a demo. Right, so now I've got 120 ohm on the gate. Now in my previous tests, you could come up to 47 ohm and all that ringing with all this large amount of inductance in the leads would disappear. So let's put it to the test. Two volts. Well, it was starting to conduct, so we're in the ohmic region. No ringing look. Oh well, see the bulbs come on. So this has got a low threshold on the gate. 3.7 volts and this over you have to turn this up so this over reads so the voltage is probably down at 3.2 3.3 oh look 420 milliamps 430 but look at the scope absolutely zero problems no ringing none clean as a whistle but so I can tell you this FET would probably stop ringing if I just put a 47 ohm resistor on it No more ringing, but that's with 120 ohm. The first transistor was a Vishay IRF840. The second Infineon, the cool MOS, didn't turn off. Another Infineon that didn't turn off. This model here. There's my huge amounts of inductance and all my leads. So I can't have any criticism about that. But the theory behind the ringing is because I'll pass the current through all these leads. The inductance effective inductors will charge up. When you turn the FET off, the magnetic field collapses and induces a voltage into the circuit. Because you've got this parasitic capacitance within the FET, they can store energy and so can your inductors. So the inductors discharge into the caps. The caps are then charged as, and there's nothing on the coils. They're more positively charged than the inductors. They discharge back into the inductors and it starts to ring. Anyway, this has been an introduction into gate loop ringing. What happens to an Infineon FET when you suffer with gate loop ringing? So this is gate loop ringing, take two. If you liked it, leave a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.